हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू दी कोर्स फिजिक्स प्रिंसिपल्स एंड एप्लीकेशंस फॉर एफ वाई बी एस सी सेमिस्टर वन फिजिक्स पेपर टू सो लेट अस स्टार्ट अवर फिफ्थ चैप्टर एप्लीकेशंस ऑफ इलेक्ट्रोमैग्नेटिक वेव्स सो इन दिस लेक्चर वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी द वेरियस एप्लीकेशंस ऑफ इलेक्ट्रोमैग्नेटिक वेव्स इन डिटेल so we will study the microwave oven and radar in detail we will also study the pyroelectric thermometer so let us study what are electromagnetic waves so electromagnetic waves or em waves are the waves that are created as a result of vibrations between an electric field and a magnetic field in other words electromagnetic waves are composed of oscillating magnetic and electric fields so this is the electromagnetic spectrum in this electromagnetic spectrum we can see the different waves are arranged with the their respective frequencies or wavelengths so we can see from left to right the wavelength goes on increasing so gamma rays having smallest wavelength and the radio waves they are having longest wavelengths whereas we can see from right to left the frequency goes on increasing that means the gamma rays they are having the highest frequencies that means they are highest energy radiations right so let us study the applications so first application of electromagnetic waves is microwave oven so we know the microwaves refer to the electromagnetic rays with frequencies between 300 megahertz and 300 gigahertz and of the wavelength between 1 mm to 1 meter in the electromagnetic spectrum that means the microwave they fall in the region of 1 mm to 1 meter right in that range only the microwaves they fall and therefore we can have the microwaves uh, for various applications so microwaves are small when compared to waves used in the radio broadcasting so if you see the radio broadcasting waves they are greater than 1 meter right so greater than 1 meter to few kilometers and these are the radio waves they are used in broadcasting and microwaves they are smaller than that of the radio waves and therefore they are called as microwaves it doesn't mean that they are the smallest one right we know the smallest waves are gamma rays right so microwaves are smaller than the radio waves and therefore they are called as microwave right their range is in between the radio waves and infrared waves they don't require any medium to travel right we know that the microwaves or any electromagnetic radiation it doesn't need any medium to travel and metals will reflect these waves totally non metals such as glass and particles are partially transferred to these waves right so when these microwaves they incident on the metals they will be reflected back and for example on the non metals um, such as glass and other particles they are partially transparent to the microwaves right and therefore we can have the various applications of microwaves so microwave oven is one of the application microwaves are suitable for wireless transmission of signals of having larger bandwidths they are used in the communication uh, for mo mobile communications also they are being used microwaves are most commonly used in satellite communications radar signals phones and navigations applications other applications where the microwaves use are medical treatment drying materials and in household for food preparation microwaves are suitable for wireless transmission wireless lan protocol x bluetooth signals having high, higher bandwidth so let us study the characteristics of microwaves they are reflected by metals they pass through glass paper plastic and similar materials they are absorbed by food so microwaves can cause water and fat molecules to vibrate so they are used for cooking in microwave ovens 
right so this is typical uh, microwave oven used in the household let us study the principle of microwave oven so microwave oven is commonly used for cooking purpose without using water high energy of the microwave rotates the polar molecules of water fat and sugars of the food stuff this rotation causes friction that result in heat generation this process is called dielectric heating the excitation by the microwave is almost uniform so that the food will heat up uniformly the cooking in microwave oven is fast efficient and safe so this is a typical microwave oven so it consists of different parts so the microwave oven consists of a high voltage transformer that passes energy into the magnetron so this is magnetron tube a magnetron chamber magnetron control unit a wave guide and cooking chamber are different parts of this microwave oven right so this is the transformer where we when we plug power to the uh, transformer it will give the power and it will give the energy to the this magnetron right so magnetron is the source of radiation right so it is the source of microwave radiation and that microwaves they will pass to the uh, we can say microwave chamber by using this wave guide so this is the wave guide right wave guide means some cylindrical or uh, uh, we can say a rectangular kind of tube a metal tube inside that metal tube the uh, waves they are pass from one place to another place so from magnetron the um, uh, through wave guide the uh, microwaves they are passed to the we can say the magnetron chamber so this is magnetron chamber and where uh, inside the oven they uh, uh, we can say we put the food and on this food the microwaves they are incident right <coughs> so let us study the working of the microwave oven so the energy in the microwave oven has a frequency of 2.445 gigahertz with a wavelength of 12.24 cm so you can imagine the size of the wavelength right so the wavelength is of the 12.24 cm size right so microwave propagates as alternating cycles so that the polar molecules so polar, mo polar molecules means the molecules which has one end positive and other end negative right so these polar molecules they will align themselves according to alternative cycles so polar molecules example is hcl right so in hcl what we have ionic bond uh, sorry a covalent bond and here the uh, we can see the uh, chlorine is more electronegative than the hydrogen and because of that the uh, chlorine attracts all the atoms towards uh, all the chlorine atom uh, attracts the shared electron pair towards itself right and therefore chlorine becomes slightly electronegative whereas hydrogen becomes slightly electropositive so this molecule is a polar molecule here in the uh, this o1 we use the water right so water molecules are there inside the food so water molecule is also a polar molecule where h atoms they are slightly positive charge and o oxygen atom is at slightly negative charge and therefore this molecule h2o molecule is polar right so these microwaves they uh, give uh, so alternating cycles so they are waves so that the polar molecules they align themselves according to the alternating cycles so the polar molecules they will start aligning uh, as per the uh, cycles of the microwaves right so this self alignment causes rotation of polar molecules the rotating polar molecules hit other molecules and put them into motion right so all these polar molecules they uh, they, they will there will be collisions between all these molecules and in this process a large amount of heat will be produced and this heat induced heating is more efficient if the tissue has high water content right so since there are free water molecules to rotate so inside uh, the food when we have the water so the heating is more efficient and in that case what will have the water molecules they will heat up and uh, we can say uh, fat sugars 
or frozen water etc shows less dielectric heating due to the presence of less free water molecules microwave cookings uh, microwave cooks the outer part of the food first and then the inner part similar to ordinary cooking using flame right so we can see the uh, water molecules they will heat up and they will uh, cook the food right ultimately so microwave cooking is more efficient than conventional cooking and energy heats only the food not the compartment right so only the food will be heated and not the compartment even the vessel that carrying the food that will be that will also not be heated right so food cook faster does not reduce the nutritional value of the food less vitamins and mineral loss will be there glass ceramic paper plastic container are used in the microwave oven so we will not use the metallic uh, container because metals they will reflect the microwaves back and therefore we use glass ceramics paper or plastic containers only in the microwave oven let us now move to another applications of electromagnetic waves that is radar so radar is an abbreviation of radio detection and ranging so we can see the radio detection and ranging so only these few words uh, from this word or this uh, term we have taken so radar word is will be formed so it is basically an electromagnetic system used to detect the location and distance of an object from the point where the radar is placed it works by radiating energy into space and monitoring the echo of or reflected signal from the object to measure the target distance it operates in the ultra high frequency and microwave range so radar will operate in the ultra high frequency and microwave range right radars are used by ships aircrafts and weather forecasters so this is typically a radar antenna used uh, by ships or uh, we can say uh, on the airports also we can see this kind of antenna so this is uh, we can say the dial circular dial uh, uh, inside the ships or airplanes so radar uh, will give a 360 degree view of the surrounding objects right so any threat to the uh, ships or aircrafts uh, will be there that will be detected by the aircraft uh, radars are also used for weather forecasting right so for weather forecasting so we have the uh, clouds if you have clouds in the atmosphere when the uh, we can say the microwaves they are incident on the uh, these uh, clouds right so they will be reflected from um, back from the clouds and we can take the picture right so we will learn that where the clouds are present and where they are moving and therefore we can make the forecast of the weather so let us study the principle of radar inside radar a short pulse of electromagnetic radiation is transmitted from a highly directional antenna when this transmitted pulse hit the distance target a part of the radiation is reflected back and an echo pulse which is detected by the receiver so in this diagram you can see we have an highly directional antenna that di uh, directional antenna will send or it will transmit the pulse uh, to the distance target right so this this is the transmitted pulse and when it will hit the uh, target that part of the radiation that will be reflected back and that will be called as echo pulse right that echo pulse will be reflected uh, pulse from the uh, reflected wave from the target and that the echo pulse will be again received by the radar and in this case that receiver radar receiver will detect it and it will analyze the two signals and from that we can determine the exact location and uh, let's say the uh, speed of the distance target so let us study the working of radar so radar system system generally consists of a transmitter which produces an electromagnetic signal which is radiated into space by an antenna when this signal strikes any object it get reflected or radiated in many directions this reflected or echo signal is received by the radar antenna which delivers it to the receiver 
where it is processed to determine the geographical statistics of the object. The range is determined by calculating the time taken by the signal to travel from the radar to the target and back. The target's location is measured in angle from the direction of maximum amplitude echo signal and the antenna points to. To measure range and location of moving objects, Doppler effect is used. So we know the uh, Doppler effect in the case of sound. So similarly, the Doppler effect uh, will be used to determine whether the target is approaching towards the, mm, we can see uh, the target is approaching towards the radar uh, in the direction of radar or it is moving away from the radar from that we can uh, easily determine the range and location of the moving object so this is the block diagram of radar so you can see here we have the uh, antenna from this antenna uh, uh, the wave will be transmitted towards the target and wave, wave will strike on the target it will be reflected back and it will be again received by the antenna so inside this antenna we have a duplexer so where uh, we have uh, received signal will be uh, sent to the receiver and one transmitter sig signal that will be uh, received from the transmitter that will be sent to the antenna right so the duplexer which will act uh, in joining the transmitter and receiver to the antenna right so when the uh, pulse uh, will be uh, sent so that modulator will uh, modulate the pulse and it will send to the transmitter that transmitter will send pulse to the duplexer the duplexer will send to the antenna and antenna will transmit that pulse towards the target and when the uh, pulse or wave will be hit on the target it will be reflected by part of the wave will be reflected back and that reflected uh, echo signal will be received by antenna and it will be passed through the duplexer to the receiver right where that receiver transmit the signal to the uh, display uh, inside this uh, arrangement we have a computer so inside this computer that will process the signals both the signals we have the master clock where the we can see the uh, it will keep track of the transmitted wave and received wave right so this computer will uh, on the display it will do the calculation and it will display on the display it will show the exact location and uh, all the range and other details of the target so let us study different parts of the radar a transmitter means the signal is first generated using a waveform generator and then amplified in the power amplifier waveguides so waveguides are the transmission lines for transmission of the radar signals. So we know that microwaves, they need our waveguides. Waveguide means some cylindrical or uh, rectangular shaped tubes, uh, metal tubes inside that tubes, the wave, uh, uh, wave will be transmitted from one point to other point, right? So antenna, the antenna use uh, can be a parabolic reflector, planar arrays or electronically steered phased arrays duplexer a duplexer allows the antenna to be used as a transmitter or as a receiver so both applications of antenna can be done at the same time by using the duplexer it can be a gaseous device that would produce a short circuit at the input to the receiver when transmitter is working right so at a time one part will be work working that means either transmitter or receiver uh, of the uh, working and it will send uh, signals to the uh, antenna or it will receive uh, signal from the antenna right so receiver is it can be super heterodyne receiver or any other receiver which consists of a processor to process the signal and detect it threshold decision the output of the dis receiver is compared with a threshold to detect the presence of any object if the output is below any threshold the presence of noise is assumed right so there will be some uh, threshold uh, we can say uh, set in terms of the uh, eco signal right so we may be receiving some eco signal back uh, scattered by different objects uh, in the atmosphere maybe plant uh, we can say trees and uh, mountains and everything right so that uh, therefore some threshold is set right 
and beyond the threshold if we receive the signal then we can say the there will be uh, the target otherwise we can say it is a noise right so let us study the operating characteristics of radar the operation of radar system depends upon following factors first one is the choice of operating frequency so high frequency usually tends to uh, greater than tends to 9 hertz is used or it gives uh, high resolution requires antenna of small size but increases noise and decreases power generated right so high frequency uh, if we, we use high frequency greater than 10 to 9 hertz it will it will give us high resolution means object can be easily detected so high resolution requires antenna of small size so we we can have use the small size antenna also but it will increase the noise and therefore uh, decreases the power generated also right therefore the choice of operating frequency is also important another uh, characteristic operating characteristic is pulse duration duration so uh, for a good range resolution pulse duration of 1 second or less are employed right so we must use uh, pulse duration of 1 second or less so every time we have to send pulse right so transmitter will be working for only short time and it will stop and then uh, receiver will be in action right so we are sending continuously we are uh, sending pulses so transmitter will be working and then receiver will be working right so transmitter will send pulse then it will stop working then receiver will receive uh, will be on it will uh, receive any uh, signal is incoming signal then again it will stop and then again uh, the transmitter will work so the uh, pulse duration is very short so only 1 second pulse will be used or less than 1 second duration pulse will be employed right so next characteristic is pulse repetition frequency the time spent in the path between radar and objects may not exceed the interval between transmitted pulses for larger range we required low pulse repetition rate usually it is from 350 to 10000 cycles so if the uh, target is uh, closer in that case we will need false uh, very fast uh, pulse rate but when the target is far away from the uh, radar in that case what we need very slow or low pulse repetition rate and therefore the pulse repetition frequency is also an important characteristics then another characteristic is transmitted power output the transmitted power is determined by the maximum distance over which it is des de desired to receive target information it is generally more than 1 megawatt right so generally more than 1 megawatt power will be used to transmit and receive signals from the target we can say <coughs> maximum range so maximum range of the radar is depend upon the energy of uh, of the transmitted pulses and the sensitivity of the receiving signal right so how much energy we are transmitting that means transmitted output power if it is high and if the um, uh, sensitivity of the receiving si system is good then we can have a very large range of the radar otherwise the there will be limitations on the range of the radar so let us study the different uses of this radar so radar is very sensitive instrument to find un under all weather conditions the positions of mountains icebergs in seashore lines buried metals oil and ores it is also useful in safe landing of aircrafts and to detect any aircraft in atmosphere even in poor visibility due to heavy fog civilian uses radar has been widely used by ships for navigation air traffic control radar monitors the air traffic radar which gca ground control approach system is used to guide aircraft to a safe landing in fall weather the radars have equipped with altimeters to determine the height of the uh, aircraft above the ground so altimeter is a device that is used to determine the height of the aircraft above the ground and that also utilize the radars right 
in military applications the radar is used to surveillance and for the control of weapons the radars detect and locate hostile targets for the purpose of proper military actions right then uh, in daw that means distance early warning radars are used for detection of aircraft and bmews that means ballistic missile early warning system radars for detecting and tracking of ballistic missiles right that means if any foreign uh, or um, enemy aircrafts or missiles are incoming towards uh, um, uh, the land right in that case it will be detected uh, by the these two systems dw and bmews system they will be installed on aircrafts and uh, ships and even on the lands AEW that means airborne early warning radars and AI airborne interception radar are used to guide a fighter aircraft to its targets right shipboard surveillance radar is used to navy purposes right so we will have different kinds of radars they will be used in the military applications in scientific uh, scientific applications radars have been used as measuring tools in meteorology the radar can be used to guide space vehicles satellites or exploration of interplanetary space right there also we use radars in the case of remote sensing they are used in remote sensing for detecting weather conditions of the atmosphere right so we can uh, remotely determine the atmospheric condition by using radar right so these are the applications of radar let us now move an to another application of electromagnetic waves that is pyroelectric thermometer so, so pyrometer is an instrument for measuring temperature right so we can say the pyrometer word comes from the greek word for fire so pyro means fire and meter means to measure right so uh, that word means uh, pyrometer right the amount of thermal energy or heat leaving a body by radiation and the wavelength of that radiation are functions of the temperature of the body right so this is the principle this depends uh, uh, this dependence on temperature of the characteristic of radiation is used as the basis of temperature measurement in these instruments so what is the principle of parameter that is the amount of thermal energy or heat leaving a body by radiation and the wavelength of that radiation are functions of temperatures of the body right so this is the principle of parameter right so this is a typical uh, we can see a pyrometer so we have this uh, uh, different layers in this material right so inside we have the uh, black coating then pyroelectric material will be there and we have two electrodes right so when the radiation that will incident on the this coating black coating that coating will absorb that radiation and that radiation will pass right so that heat will be passed uh, to this electrode so on, on this pyroelectric material on both sides we have two electrodes right so one part of this uh, will be at the lower temperature and other part that will be at higher temperature right so this is a typical pyroelectric uh, kind of thermometer uh, that is used right pyroelectric detectors are ther thermal detectors temperature fluctuations produce a ch charge uh, on the charge change on the surface of pyroelectric crystals which produces a corresponding electrical signal this temperature gradient can be created by the absorption of light so when light will incident on this pyroelectric material it will produce the change in the charge of, uh, inside that material and that will produce an electrical signal that electrical signal will be converted into a temperature scales and that will be displayed on the screen so there are different pyroelectric different types of pyroelectric materials available three of which are commonly used in pyroelectric detectors are dla tgs then li tao3 and pjt right so these are the materials so pyroelectric detectors for thermal radiation are a relatively new form of pyrometer the construction material is usually uh, ceramics are materials whose molecules have a permanent electric dipole moment 
because of the position of the electrons in molecules normally these molecules lie in a random mishmash manner all across the bulk of the material hence there is no net electrification as a whole right so usually ceramics are used and these materials they will be having uh, different molecules and these molecules they will having permanent electric dipole moments that means these molecules will be polar molecules and these polar molecules they are randomly placed inside this material and therefore their direction is uh, scattered right and because of that there will be no net electric magnetic electric moment inside the uh, material right so there will be no net electric dipole moment and there will be no net electrification as a whole inside the material also at ambient temperatures the location or orientation of these molecules is more or less fixed if the temperature is raised above some level characteristics to the particular material the molecules start to rotate freely the rot the temperature at which it starts to happen is called as the curie temperature right so we will have the electric um, the inside this dielectric material what will be there the uh, electric dipole moments they will be randomly arranged right uh, of the molecules right but when the temperature will be increase these they will be uh, starting aligning in some particular direction right and at the temperature uh, at the particular temperature they will start to align uh, to rotate freely and that temperature is called as curie temperature right if the piece of pyroelectric material is placed between two electrodes at ambient temperature then the molecular dipoles are almost fixed throughout the structure when the temperature of the radiant object is increased then the temperature and an electric potential is applied then the molecules of the ceramic will align themselves and an electric field will be generated in the ceramic right so if the we can say when the temperature of the uh, that object will be increased then the temperature and an electric potential is applied so we have to apply some small electric potential to the material right then uh, the molecules of the ceramic or dielectric material they will align themselves in the direction of the field electric field and they we can say electric field will be uh, generated in in this process in those electric field and that will uh, we can say that will be detected by the we have some arrangement to detect that electric field in those electric field right so with the increase in temperature there will be increase in the uh, electric potential because there will be more uh, uh, alignment of the dipoles in the direction of electric field right and if the temperature of the ceramic material is increased then the molecular dipoles will now rotate at higher angle right so higher temperature will be there there will be higher rotation of the uh, this molecular dipoles thus greater the temperature of the radiant object greater will be the angle of oscillations of the molecular dipoles right so this is the working so when the pyroelectric surface is used as a detector uh, in the uh, pyrometer the radiations from the source are absorbed by the pyroelectric material its surface temperature increases right if in the beginning the charge on the electrodes would be leaked away through the external electrical circuit and hence the measure voltage between the two electrodes would be zero when the py pyroelectric surface heats up a voltage is detected between the two electrodes right as the temperature is further increase further voltage is increase through this voltage value can be measured the temperature right so this is the working of the pyroelectric thermometer so in the today's lecture we have studied various applications of electromagnetic waves we have studied the microwave oven in detail we have studied the radar and we have also studied the pyroelectric thermometer in detail in the next lecture we will study another applications of electromagnetic waves right thank you